I'm Mark Brzezonski, and I'm your host for Mideast Realities. We're in Springfield, Virginia. We're at the United Association for Studies and Research. And we're here to discuss the case of uh, Musa Abu Mazruk, who many of you have probably never heard of, but who's the political leader of Hamas, which is the alternative organization in Palestine um, struggling for leadership in Palestine. Dr. Ahmed Youssef is the executive director of this organization. He's also the editor of the Middle East Journal, and he's going to introduce us to the panel that we have with us uh, today to discuss these issues. Uh, first, uh, I welcome everybody here coming to this roundtable discussion. We have actually a series of these uh, discussions, and tonight is maybe a special uh, roundtable discussion. My uh, first guest, uh, Dr. Imad Din Ahmed from John Hopkins University, and he's the, the director of Mineral to Freedom in uh, Maryland. Uh, the second, Imam Muhammad Lassi, is the elected Imam of the Islamic Center of uh, Washington. Uh, then Laura Drake, uh, she is our uh, assistant editor for the Middle East Affairs uh, Journal. Mr. Rafiq Jabir, he is the president of uh, Islamic Association for Palestine. Everybody, thanks for coming. And thank you for hosting this discussion. Tell us just a bit about the UASR, how long you've been in existence, what your main purpose is. Uh, the, actually, UASR uh, was formed to satisfy a broad agenda that seeks the study of ongoing uh, issues in the Middle East, such as the Arab-Israeli conflict. In addition, UASR founders envisioned an organization that would promote greater dialogue and understanding among ideologically dis disparate uh, groups in the Arab and Islamic world. UASR includes in its goal the promotion of constructive debate among the observers of the region. Yusur's work is also geared uh, towards building bridges between the Western and Muslim worlds, uh, the mutual uh, misunderstanding among the people of these civilizations is counterproductive. USR, UASR aims to clarify perspectives in all sides of the ideological spectrum. Actually, we uh, we have 
publish many uh, our activities actually it has three uh, things the publication we have the, our quarterly journal the Middle East Affairs Journal and we have occasional paper dealing with these issues, these issues is political Islam and Arab Israeli conflict and also we have this round uh, it was monthly roundtable discussion uh, discuss the issue of Islam and the West cooperation that confrontation inviting people from uh, the Western uh, countries to discuss with some of the Islamists and uh, activists from the Muslim world some issues re related to the American foreign policy and how is the people in this country looked up to Islam and political Islam in uh, particular. Uh, we also uh, uh, doing some other activities from time to time like the the big conference which we held uh, in three day, three years ago in, in DC to uh, tackle the issue of uh, Muslim misperception and uh, stereotype in, 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 in this country it was a successful conference we invited people from the Congress and many Muslim scholars coming from Pakistan Jordan Egypt and some other countries to have this kind of nice discussion between Muslim and, uh, and uh, Western scholars to handle this kind of misperception. All right, uh, thank you, Ahmed, and thank you again for arranging this panel here at your organization. Living in Springfield, Virginia, is this gentleman whose poster is behind me, uh, Musa Abu uh, Mazruk, who, as I said, most of you may not have heard of. And yet he's become a very important player in Middle East affairs. Uh, for the last three years, he's been the political director of Hamas, essentially the Jerry Adams, if you will, of the Islamic Palestinian movement. And let's get right into this. He was arrested at uh, Kennedy Airport in July. There are no actual charges against him. And I'd like to ask each of you, why should Americans be concerned? Well, Why don't we for, start at the end? Well, for one, the Americans should be concerned because whatever goes on in the Middle East, it affects the American policies here. It affects the Americans in general. For one, uh, when there is stability in the Middle East, uh, usually uh, that's uh, good for the United States. If there is no stability, it's not to the best interest of the United States. And by uh, having one uh, leader being arrested based on charges that came from a foreign country, which is Israel in this case, that uh, brings it to the point to the uh, American uh, people as this is not going to help the stability that we are looking for as, uh, you know, as uh, the United States. So it is uh, very important that we know, his, you know, the background of this uh, man and why, what the charges are uh, against him, which is not from our government. He did not break any laws as far as we know. Everybody was shocked to see the United States actually uh, arrest him for that purpose. All right, Laura, w w again, why should Americans care? I mean, here's one individual, he's a political official of Hamas, the Israelis say he's a terrorist. Um, lots of people uh, suffer in the Middle East, lots of people have been arrested, lots of people have been accused of this and that. What is so special and significant about this particular case? Why should Americans care? Well, I think specifically that Americans should care because it, it's an assault on civil liberties. And whether it's applied to citizen or resident alien or any other individual residing within this country, um, these, the Constitution is supposed to protect everybody equally in terms of freedom of speech and association. Uh, and so the arrest of uh, Dr. Abu Marzouk uh, is kind of a continuation of the assault on civil liberties that have been taken against people who have taken political positions on Middle East issues in particular. Um, I think it started with the arrest of the Los Angeles Eight back in 1986. Eight individuals who were arrested because of suspected sympathies with the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Mm -hmm. Israel is sort of a sacred cow in this country, but a democracy can't afford to have sacred cows in terms of uh, people being allowed to have political associations and to support and be, maybe be against that sacred cow, that's part of a democracy. It's supposed to protect the right of minority opinions and unpopular opinions. So this case will show whether what the future of civil, liberty, civil liberties are in this country. Um, the, your last sentence is uh, uh, a very important one because uh, it is a very uh, dangerous issue that the United States has uh, placed under arrest an innocent individual 
who actually is centered within an organization, uh, which is Hamas, the organization itself is centered within the Islamic context or the Arab-Israeli conflict in the Middle East, which itself is centered within the uh, the overall uh, Islamic politicization process that is going on afoot and has been for the past decade and a half. Now, when you when you pick on an individual like this, uh, you arrest him at an airport without any evidence or without any uh, proof that he has violated any of the laws of this land and then you have him behind bars ever since the end of July last year 1995 uh, for a period of about roughly nine months now without anyone sort of uh, being aware that this is going on that in and of itself is indicative of a very dangerous process uh, of arresting a person like that. That's but, pe but people are aware. The Israelis say he's a terrorist. The American government has declared Hamas a terrorist organization. It's not that people who want to find out aren't aware. The question is, why should the average American really give a damn? Well, uh, people are aware, yes, but let's not confuse the forest for the trees. There are po the, the politically initiated, those who are really tuned into the Middle Eastern issue, mm -hmm. the Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, on any side of this issue, they are aware of this. But when we come to the American public, it's not the no Mr. Normal and Average out there who's aware that Musa Abu Marzouk is behind bars. That's why we're doing this program. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's one of the issues, I think, that um, is not in proportion to the act itself. Media-wise, uh, there's no match for a serious violation of law due process, as is the case of arresting uh, Dr. Musa Abu Marzouk. That's number one. Number two, let me let, let me uh, zero in on the uh, what concerns every American. What concerns every American is obviously the economic uh, well-being of this country. Uh, Americans really are not bothered uh, by. Uh, some individual becoming a uh, political issue between two sides of the Middle Eastern conflict, this is not new. It's happened before, it's probably going to happen again. So as far as this is concerned, the Americans probably are not going to be affected by uh, an argument uh, that swings both ways. But what the Americans may be concerned of is when we begin to jeopardize the flow of oil from the Middle East, and they're going to begin to have uh, lines of oil at the gas stations. They're going to begin to be uh, concerned about the rising price of oil and, and everything that goes with oil, because uh, the industrial complex is really lubricated by oil in many respects. And so in that regard, I think um, uh, the issue of detaining uh, Dr. Musa Abu Marzouk, placed in the context of other uh, developments that are going on, such as uh, uh, placing a uh, another uh, Islamic scholar uh, behind bars here in the United States, uh, coupled with uh, the the general. You mean the sheikh from sheikh, Egypt? Yes, mm -hmm. right. Uh, in addition to uh, the general atmosphere of trying to pursue uh, Muslims in this country, just because they have become politically aware of uh, the Arab-Israeli uh, conflict. Uh, you have right now the anti-terrorism bill that's been uh, uh, a matter of trying to make it through Congress. Let's come back to that, okay. because that's a very important development. But Dr. Ahmed, why should Americans care? Why do you think Americans should care? <clears throat> well, actually, I was going to get on that uh, issue, because I think okay. what Americans, the reason that Americans should care is that this particular violation of civil liberties is merely symptomatic of a trend that's going on in the United States today. And what we see is uh, that the civil liberties of all Americans are in jeopardy. Uh, looking at the particulars of the case, certainly uh, being detained, being arrested without charge is something that if it happened to uh, your neighbor, any American would be very upset by this. You can't, you can't hold people without charge in this country. Um, the idea that he's being held for such a long period of time. If someone is accused of something, terrorism, anything, they have a right to a speedy trial. And it's only if they and their attorneys waive that right 
that that trial can be All right, but here's where my legal background comes in. There actually is a charge. The Israelis want him extradited. The Israelis have claimed he's a terrorist. The charge isn't that he's done anything in America. The charge is that he's done something or is complicitous in something that's been done in Israel. Excuse me, but I meant specific charges. In the United States, you can't arrest someone for, quote, be, being a terrorist. You have to cite the, the time, the place, and the law that he has broken. Well, with the new laws, apparently you can, because it's been done. Without uh, the new no, no, law, no, because uh, because he uh, it's because of his particular uh, status. I, I don't believe that I don't believe that they could do this to your neighbor. Without the new law, this man lived in the United States Are you for talking fourteen about the law years. That just passed. He oh, lived yes, in the exactly. United States for fourteen exactly. years. He he went back right. and forth exactly. to the Middle East. And that was the point I was getting to. Then Bill Clinton, for that's, reasons we can get into, well, declared Hamas into, a terrorist organization. No, no, let's get into them because that was my point. That essentially now we have domestic policy in the United States being driven by foreign concerns. But not, uh, not by the foreign policy concerns mm -hmm. of the government, which would be bad enough, but actually by foreign interests. And uh, I expand that. It's not just Israel. I think Egypt plays a role. Uh, Imam al-Asi correctly identified the situation with, uh, um, with Sheikh Omar. Uh, the issue there is if you look at the specific charges against the Sheikh, he is essentially accused of teaching his interpretation of Islam. Uh, anybody else can teach their interpretation of, this, of their religion, it's not against the law. It's not the same as committing specific violent acts or actually being involved in the specific planning of terrorist acts. Bottom line, law is being used for political purposes. Exactly. And it's going and, and will be used under the new counterterrorism bill and not limited just to immigrants or re residents, but can be used against citizens. All right. Dr. Yusuf, you, I believe, see uh, Mr. Abu Mazrook uh, weekly in the prison in New York. You go up there often and see him. You know him personally. What would he uh, say if he were responding to this question? Why should Americans care that one man has been arrested and may be extradited to Israel? Yeah, actually, I interviewed him last week, and uh, I raised this question: Why, actually, did he come to this country in, in, in the beginning? And he told me this is his country. He lived in this country for 14 years. His kids living in this country, and he has nothing to do with the American uh, politics. So uh, he just a political figure living in the Middle East, uh, the leader of a political organization. He fought for li liberation of his country from uh, occupation, which, which is legitimate cause and uh, supported by, supposed to be by the United Nations uh, uh, laws. And, uh, and uh, also in, in a country like the United States, promote democracy and the human rights like what we usually hear. Somebody like him will come to this country and uh, try also to, to seek a, uh, or to maybe he tried to, to, to play a role, to be a bridge to con between uh, the American agenda and, and uh, something, some interest in the Middle East. Because Hamas has a publicity in, in, in the Muslim world and they get support from all over the Muslim and Arab countries. Somebody like him, I think he, he going to be a great asset to the United States. To to try to open uh, dialogue with with him, something as 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 an American, I w would like to wonder. This is a political figure, this guy who never uh, commit any kind of uh, any kind any act of violence coming to this country, because he used to he has a business in this country. The the question I would as um, if I am American, I would uh, raise this question: Why this guy? In, in, or in, in the beginning, why they arrested him? If they have anything against him, why they don't Okay, but we, we, we really know why he was arrested. We know that he was arrested so because the, the, the Israelis that asked is, for him is to our be arrested. Ag political policy is that much tied to Israeli agenda? This is the question. Is our politics drawn in Israel or the people or dictated from Israel? This is the question. If I am American, I will raise this question. Is our policy dictated in Israel or in, All right, in our interest here? Maybe, maybe none of you are going to say so, but maybe as an American Jew, I'm maybe a little, a little more free to say so. We all know the power of the Israeli Jewish lobby in Washington. We all know that Bill Clinton, as president, uh, was promoted by that lobby. We all know that the president of that lobby resigned during the last election campaign when he was overheard in a, in a secretly tape-recorded conversation claiming that a dozen people from the lobby had infiltrated the Clinton campaign headquarters and that when Bill Clinton was elected, he was going to do everything the Israelis wanted him to do, which is pretty much what many of us who write about foreign policy have concluded. 
So there's no secret why he was yeah, arrested. He was arrested. Our vital interest is in, in the Arab and Muslim countries. So I, I should consider about our vital interest in the Arab world. In, in arresting somebody like this will endanger these strategic and vital interests. Of well, the, now the that's United what States. I want to know. Just how are American vital interests going to be jeopardized because the political leader of Hamas has been put in jail and may be extradited to Israel? Can, can, but as specifically as possible. I mean, it's not just enough to say that there's injustice being done. It's not enough to say there's a powerful Israeli Jewish lobby. If Americans are really going to be concerned about this, they want to know how their interests, both uh, the country's interests and their personal interests, are going to be harmed, threatened. Well, there, you know, look at it from this, not just uh, Abu Marzouk alone. There is a trend here in the country now, especially with the Clinton administration, that harassing and the Islamic organizations, uh, Arab American or, uh, organizations, to, the, to satisfy the needs <coughs> and the, the foreign needs of the uh, foreign country, which is Israel. If we look at it from perspective as an American, where our interest lies, you know, we have a lot of interest in lies with the with the Arab American with the Arab countries with the Islamic countries, which is uh, represent or actually over one billion people around the, the world, and not with the one country which is a small country compared to this that it, uh, it's in Israel. That's one area. The second, the um, the um, the Muslims everywhere when they see that kind of a trend, more and more they're going to see it as they they will give up on America which is America supposed to play the role of being this, the strongest democracy in the world, to promote these kind of ideas and to promote democracy around the world, how are they going to trust the United States to, you know, even the people, not talking about the government, the people of the Arab world and the Muslim world, to trust the government that's saying something and doing something different, completely. And when they cannot make up their mind which is the best interest of the country, which is whether with the Israel or with the one billion Muslims around the country. And the, if the trend continues on, it's going to create the uh, ill will, and there are going to be probably even some hard feelings in the Arab countries and the Muslim countries that could pressure those countries, or some of them, they might even would be some military coups in the, those some countries just for that purpose alone. And then we're going to have to start, like what happens in Iran, which we've seen that happen, and with the American policies, we're all together with the Shah, not going with the interests of the people. And now we got another regime that we start complaining about and we start saying, well, this is what they're doing and this and that. That could very well happen also in any country in the Arab world and the Islamic world. When they're saying, then we're going to be start cleaning up and start cleaning the mess, and all this to only to satisfy the Israel. Well, speaking of the Arab world, uh, we actually have a representative who I'd like to ask to join us from the Arab League, an old friend, Ghassan Bishara. Oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, he'll, he'll tell us himself uh, who, what he has to do with, um, and Dr. Yusuf's going to give up his chair. We're old friends, but we haven't been in touch for a while, and we'll take away your name tag, Ghassan Bishara, and I'm sorry for misintroducing you, so I'll yeah. let you introduce yourself. Yeah, I am, I'm <laughs> a freelance journalist, uh, and I'm not really employed by the League of Arab States or Arab League at all. I'm, I'm a freelance journalist, Palestinian <coughs> journalist, American citizen, and like you said, we've known each other for quite some time. So the bottom line is I'm not employed well, by the Arab League. The, the bottom line is actually that I can vouch for the fact that you're an extremely thoughtful and provocative and honest and candid person about these issues. And so I'm eager to hear from you. Why should Americans be concerned that this gentleman is sitting in prison and might be extradited to Israel? Well, I mean, I think, I think I've, I've been uh, listening in on to what's been said. There isn't really much that I could add, except for the fact that I think your your uh, your interrogation, your your attempt to 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 prod things out. Uh, I think uh, uh, I would answer that by saying the following: I think in the Uni in the Middle East, the United States has learned that it can have its cake and eat it too. It can be a friend to the declared enemy of the Arab people and the Arab government and it still can have its interests thriving in the Arab world. It's no secret, really. I mean, we, we know that. And, and, and I think all of your, your questioning, which is very well uh, uh, stated and put, and I think it would, be, it would not really have to be questions if the Arab world responded, reacted uh, in such matters in line of what their interests are and who defines those interests? 
uh, according to Arab, certain Arab government's interests, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the interests of the Arab world is being served by what is being done. If you see the re reaction of the Arab people to various uh, things that are done by the United States, it's in total disagreement uh, with, with the majority. Uh, of the Arab people disagree totally, in, in my opinion, with many of the Arab uh, government's reactions to this. So in this case, I think, I, think, I think you're right. I think the United States can have its cake and eat it too. It can have its interests in the Arab world thriving. It can sell billions of dollars to uh, various Arab countries in commodities, in cars, and whatever else. It can purchase Arab oil. It can have its bank uh, uh, host billions of Arab uh, dollars, uh, Arab money, and still it can, it can uh, assist uh, what the Arabs perceive to be to be their enemy, Israel, and from American point of view, it's fine. All right, but is it to an extent the fact that there was a revolution in Iran, that there is a Hezbollah movement in Lebanon, that there is a Hamas in Palestine, that there is a revolution in Egypt, that there's been civil war in Algeria? Aren't these things, in fact, tied together? And aren't we seeing a historical reaction? Isn't there a building confrontation between? American and Israeli interests in the Middle East and the perceived interests of the people of the region and you're, you're shaking your head uh, a, a well, lot absolutely. but this is a question for everyone but and, and let's open this up you don't have to rely on on me to point my finger uh, you see, uh, let, me, let me just re respond to my mm -hmm. what I started saying already that is the gap that I'm talking about between Arab governments many of which are unfortunately unelected governments and their people. We, we agreed before you came right. to be extremely candid and call it right. straight so you can yeah. call the Arab oh. governments, especially now that I know you're not working with the Arab